Feces represent the waste material that is formed following the processes of digestion and absorption of the nutrients introduced with food. Thanks to the peristaltic movements, the fecal material progressively advances in the digestive tract until it is expelled from the body through defecation. Color, smell, shape and consistency of feces are all important parameters that can reveal valuable information about our state of health as they represent a functioning indicator of our digestive system. It is no coincidence that the stool test can prove to be very useful in the diagnosis of some infections and pathologies affecting the gastrointestinal system. In the last video, however, which you can find by clicking here above, we saw what the color of urine says about our state of health and that of the urinary tract in general. Composition of stool Stool is made up of 75% water and 25% solid substances, including bacteria, non-digestible food residues such as cellulose and keratin proteins such as digestive enzymes, fats, inorganic substances, and dead epithelial cells of the intestinal tract. Stool composition and color can vary based on several factors, including diet, intestinal transit rate, and the variety of intestinal microbiota, set of all the symbiotic microorganisms that live permanently inside our digestive system. In a healthy person, stools are semi-solid in appearance, cylindrical in shape, soft in consistency, and range in color from light to dark brown. This characteristic coloring is due to stercobilin, a brown pigment that forms from the degradation of bilirubin by the bacteria that make up the intestinal microbiota. However, the faces may undergo an alteration in their color, which in some cases may be due to a more or less serious pathology. Let's see what they are. Clear stools. When the feces take on a color ranging from gray to white, there could be a problem attributable to the biliary system, a set of ducts of different sizes which have the task of collecting the bile produced by the liver, storing it in the gallbladder, and finally pouring it into the duodenum after meals in order to facilitate the digestion and absorption of fats and fat-soluble vitamins. We speak of hypocholia when there is a reduced production of bile by the liver or an obstruction of the normal outflow of the same within the biliary system. There will thus be a reduction in the quantity of bile pigments in the stool, which will therefore take on a whitish color. Among the most common causes we find gallstones, hepatitis, cholecystitis, biliary cirrhosis, or malignant neoplasms affecting the biliary system, such as tumors of the liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. Stools may appear light in color and greasy in appearance, also in the case of steatoria, that is when there is an excessive amount of undigested fatty substances inside them. If it is a sporadic episode, the cause may simply be an excessive consumption of foods rich in fat or alcoholic beverages, while if the disorder persists over time, the causes may be celiac disease, Crohn's disease, diverticulosis, cirrhosis of the liver or tumors of the exocrine pancreas. To find out more about what are the symptoms of pancreatic cancer, click here above to see the video I made. Dark stools The term melina refers to feces that take on a black and terry color due to the presence of blood in them. In most cases, it comes from bleeding that originates from the upper part of the gastrointestinal tract at the level of the esophagus, stomach, or duodenum. It is digested blood, whose characteristic black color is due to the oxidation of iron and hemoglobin by gastric juices, digestive enzymes, or intestinal microbiota. Among the most common causes of melina, we find various pathologies, such as gastroduodenal ulcer, esophagitis or gastritis, but also a tumor of the esophagus or stomach. Since melina can be a symptom of digested bleeding in progress, it is necessary to go to the nearest emergency department to intervene as soon as possible in order to identify the exact origin of the bleeding and promptly stop the loss. In some cases, however, the feces can take on a blackish color following an excessive consumption of licorice or after taking iron-based supplements. Feces mixed with blood when bleeding occurs in the lower gastrointestinal tract, such as the colon and rectum, the hemoglobin does not have enough time to oxidize, so you will notice stools mixed with bright red blood. 
In this case, we speak of hematochesia, and unlike melina, the blood present in the fecal material has not been digested. The causes can be numerous, including the presence of intestinal polyps, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, but also colorectal cancer. Hematochesia can often be confused with rectum bleeding, a particular type of hemorrhage whose blood loss comes from the anus and occurs during, after, or independently of defecation. Stools can also take on a reddish color after taking certain medications, such as blood thinners, or after consuming too many red-colored foods, such as tomato juice and beetroot. Green Stools When stools take on a greenish color, it can be a sign that they tend to pass too quickly along the intestinal tract. In this way, the bile does not have time to be metabolized and therefore to give the feces their typical brown color. Instead, they will become green in color due to the presence of biliverdin inside them, a bile pigment responsible for its characteristic greenish color. It is a manifestation that is frequently observed in the case of diarrhea, an enteric infection, inflammatory bowel diseases such as irritable bowel syndrome, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and in many other conditions characterized by an accelerated transit of food through the intestines. In other cases, however, the feces turn green after excessive intake of vegetables rich in chlorophyll, such as spinach, broccoli, cabbage, and green leafy vegetables in general. Other causes may be the side effects of some antibiotics or some drugs used in iron supplementation. Yellow Stools Stools may turn yellow when there is reduced digestion of fats or accelerated transit of ingested food through the intestines. If the production of yellow stools is occasional, the cause may be the intake of certain drugs or the excessive consumption of certain foods, such as rice or potatoes, or foods that contain yellow or orange pigments, such as carotene, particularly present in carrots and apricots. If instead it is a phenomenon that is observed frequently, it could be the symptom of a problem of the gastrointestinal system, including gallstones, hepatitis, jaundice, or pancreatitis, or it could be the manifestation of pathological states that interfere with the normal absorption of nutrients, such as celiac disease or lactose intolerance. Thanks to a diagnostic medical tool, known as the Bristol Scale, it is possible to classify the shape and consistency of stool into seven types and therefore know the health of your intestine. In type 1, we find feces characterized by hard lumps separated from each other, whose shape resembles that of walnuts or hazelnuts, while in type 2, the lumps are joined together and their appearance resembles a sausage. These two types indicate a more or less serious degree of constipation, which occurs when following a slow transit, the feces remain too long inside the intestine. The colon thus absorbs too much water from the fecal material and dehydrates it, making it more difficult to evacuate. In type 3, we find feces whose shape resembles that of a salami and show possible cracks on their surface. In type 4, on the other hand, they have the shape of a sausage or a snake and are expelled easily, leaving a sensation of complete intestinal emptying. In type 5, they present with soft and separated fragments and with clearly defined margins. These last three types indicate a bowl that works well and is in perfect health, even if in type 3, it would be necessary to take a greater quantity of fibers or drink more water. Type 4 represents the ideal condition and is an indication of a healthy intestinal microbiota. In Type 6, the stools have irregular edges, are pasty and jagged, while in Type 7 they have a watery consistency and have no solid parts. These last two types indicate a more or less serious degree of diarrhea, which unlike constipation, is due to too fast an intestinal transit. The intestinal mucosa does not have time to absorb the water from the feces, which will consequently be liquid and watery. Smell and floating are two other parameters that you should pay attention to. If you have to flush the toilet over and over again, it means that the feces tend to float due to their excessive air content. This happens because the bacteria that populate the intestine produce a high amount of gas following the digestion of food. It is a typical condition of food intolerances, such as gluten and lactose, but also of inflammatory bowel diseases, such as Crohn's disease. 
The feces can also take on an unpleasant odor following the putrefactive processes with which the bacteria metabolize the nutrients that have escaped intestinal absorption. It is a condition that can occur, for example, in the case of intestinal malabsorption, the causes of which can be an inflammatory bowel disease, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, a disease of the liver or pancreas or bile ducts. Although it may not be a pleasant activity, experts recommend checking your stools daily. If you notice a change in color, consistency, or shape that persists for several days, it is advisable to speak to your doctor. It will be up to him to evaluate whether you will have to undergo other tests, such as blood, urine, and stool tests. In most cases, a change in the appearance of the stool is a temporary disorder that tends to resolve itself spontaneously, while in other cases it can be the alarm bell of a more or less serious pathology.